Welcome to the Occupational Safety Leadership Podcast, episode number 68, Flammable and Combustible Liquid Categories. Let's just dive right in. So in today's episode, it's mainly found at 29 CFR 1910.106. The title is Flammable um, Liquids. And so basically, when we sit down and talk about flammable, there's going to be two categories, even though it's overall known as flammable, is flammable and combustible liquids. So let's cover a couple of uh, definitions. We have the boiling point, and the boiling point is of a uh, liquid at 14.7 pounds per square inch absolute flash point, which is going to be really critical here in the the next couple of uh, slides. The minimum temperature at which a liquid gives off vapor to form a ignitable mixture with air. And then finally, we have a flammable liquid. Any liquid having a flash point at or below 199.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So when we look at the the range of what we have, we have four separate categories. And we'll sit down and break down those in the next couple of slides here. But basically, we're going to look at the boiling point and the flash point. And then eventually, when we switch over to the combustible um, liquids, it's going to be focused on flash point only. So let's look at the first one here, category one. It's going to have a flash point below 73.4 degrees Fahrenheit and a boiling point at or below 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll sit down and cover a couple of the uh, common chemicals and fuels and uh, paints and all that stuff that we can find in in the workplace in in, in the next couple slides also. Category two, we have the flash point below 73.4 degrees and the flash point is a is above 95 degrees. Category three, this is where we we switch gears and look at the flash point only, and this is gonna have a range. So category three, a flash point at or above 73.4 and at or below 140 degrees. Category three, and then um, the final one, when we look at category four, a flash point at or above 140 degrees and at or below 199.4. Category one and two are flammable. And then when you look at three and four, that's more known as a combustible liquid. So even though that uh, they just kind of call it overall, it's a flammable, uh, it's a flammable liquid. It really has two separate meanings to it. Let's look at a couple of the uh, common class one flammable liquids that we can find. Gasoline, of course, we use that in everyday cars. Um, Acetone, benzene, butane, isopropyl alcohol, and xylene. Let's look at the common class two flammable. We have carbon disulfide, chloroform, ethylene oxide, furin, and vinyl acetate. Let's look at a couple of the class three. They still call it a flammable, but it's really a combustible. We have things like um, uh, methyl ethyl ketone, methanol, and styrene. And then finally, when we look at class fours, this is where we get into a lot of the different fuels and the oils that you can find in the workplace too then. So when we think about diesel fuel, uh, gear oil, heating oil, hydraulic oil, lube oil, and everyday motor oil, this, this is where we kind of get into that, that category. And we know that we find those in the um, everyday workforce, too. It depends on, of course, obviously, what we're making. Is it a factory? Um, is it an um, um, auto body shop? Is it a bus depot. So there's, there's going to be a lot of different places out there. Some of them are going to have flammable liquids and some more of the combustible side then. And that is it for episode number 68, flammable and combustible liquids. Please keep in mind the four separate categories. Now, what, what we didn't talk about, and we'll talk about this in, in, in future episodes, that is now that we know about the categories, 
uh, we have to look at how that we're going to store these chemicals properly too. So we just can't say, hey, awesome, we got this um, inventory of the following things. Uh, some things have to be stored in a flammable cabinet, you know, and all that good stuff then. Um, when, when you sit down and really look uh, at things like building codes, this is where they're going to say per area you can store and use the um, a class one or a class two, and it must be stored in the following way. So we still have a lot of things to talk about on this uh, category. This was just nothing more but introducing the categories out there. So episode 68 is complete. My name is Dr. David Ayers. Thank you for joining me and have a safe day.